Okay, so as a brief review, you have um, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And when you're looking at this one, you are considering that m is your slope and b is your y intercept. Um, so this is used most frequently as a the most common form of the equation that you're going to see it in. Usually IB asks you to put your final answer in this form, but um, this one is used for most easily recognizing the slope and the y-intercept, of course. With point-slope form, though, however, this is easy to take a point they give you and turn it into the equation. So um, the y1 and x1 are the coordinates of the point that they give you in in a problem. And then M, of course, is still your slope. Uh, this works really well um, for problems where they don't give you a y-intercept. Um, usually, we work from this form to get back to slope-intercept form. Standard form, I have it on here, but hopefully you will not encounter it very often. Um, so on Delta Math, you'll see lots of problems with these, um, if you wanted to go from point slope form to slope intercept form, all you have to do is solve for this y. And if you solve for this y, then you end up in slope intercept form. Again, that should all be a review. So within talking about intercepts, um, I'm just gonna do a quick review of um, systems of equations as well. So we have substitution. Now substitution works. Um, let's pull up a problem. Um, so substitution, you have um, y equals negative 5x minus 40 and y equals 5x. So when we are talking about substitution, the times that this works best is when you have a variable solved for, um, the same variable solved for on, in both equations. So in this case, both equations have y's, which means I can plug in this piece for y. So I end up with um, 5x equals negative 5x minus 40. I'm going to move the 5x terms to the other side. So I have 10x equals negative 40, which means that x is equal to negative 4. Um, again, this should be a review, but there, um, this should work for you. Now, on the other side of things, we have elimination. Now, these work a lot better if you don't have one variable solved for. So looking at this problem, the goal of this is to eliminate one variable so that we're just left with one at the end. And the one that looks like it's going to be the easiest to eliminate is the y term. So what I'm going to do is multiply this bottom equation by two. Um, and I'm just gonna write it up above to save myself some room. So we have 18x minus four y equals 86. And what I will do now, just again, to save myself some room, um, is now what we do is we're going to add these two equations together. And when I do, um, we end up eliminating these y terms. So we just have 11x is equal to 54, right? Um, and so then I would divide by 11 and I would get X is equal to 54 over 11. Um, now with that information, I can plug it back in to one of the two equations and solve for Y. Again, that should just be a review for you, but I just wanted to go back over it because, um, making sure that you've seen it before, everybody should have. And if you hadn't, you've seen it now. Okay. So now moving on to gradients. So when I talk about gradients. Um, I know that you all seemed familiar with last year, the idea that parallel means the same slope, and you would show me with your arms that parallel lines look like this. 
and you could tell me that perpendicular lines look like this. But when we talked about it last year, it seemed like a couple of you struggled with what perpendicular really means. Um, so parallel means having the same slope, meaning the same M. Um, but because perpendicular lines cross each other at 90, de 90 degree angles, that means that their slopes are opposite reciprocal. So for example, if the original slope is one half, then the reciprocal would be to flip the fraction. Um, the reciprocal means to flip the fraction and then uh, opposite means to change the sign. So the perpendicular slope would be negative two. So now with that knowledge, you should be able to answer all of this sample IB problem. Um, so let's take a look at it together. What I'd like you to do is parts one and two. Uh, you can pause your video and then check back in to see if you got the correct answer. Um, you can do that now, or if you need a refresher, the x-intercept is when y equals zero and the y-intercept is when x equals zero. Okay, so go ahead and pause your video and figure out what those are now. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to do that, let's go through it. So for the first one, you have the x-intercept. Um, now, if you consider a rational function and what the graph looks like, I know you don't have your graphing calculators, but you should know um, that the graphs, um, unless they have vertical shifts, will not have an x-intercept, but in case that wasn't enough for you, when you solve this equation, you end up getting zero equals five, which is not possible. So there is no x-intercept. As far as the y-intercept, um, when you plug in zero for x, you end up getting five over one, which is just five. Make sure you write your final answer in the form of a point, which would be zero comma five. The equation of the vertical asymptote um, is always where the denominator would be equal to zero. So where the denominator um, would change the equation. So you have x equals negative one because negative one plus one um, is not, uh, becomes zero and you can't have zero in the denominator of a fraction. Okay, so moving on, looking at now our second equation, um, it wants to find the points where they intersect. Now, again, you don't have your calculator, so you're gonna have to do this one by hand by setting F and G equal to each other. Go ahead and see if you can find the two points where that um, would be, where they would intersect the two points where they're equal. Go ahead, pause your video, take the time to do that now. So now check your work against this. You should have ended up with the two values um, the two factors are x minus 4 and x plus 2, which means the two values that would satisfy the equation are x equals 4 and x equals negative 2. Um, and if x equals 4 and x equals negative 2, you need to plug them back into either one of the equations in order to figure out um, which one uh, what your y values would be because they asked for the coordinates. So when you plug in four, you get one. When you plug in negative two, you get negative five. So now we have two points, which would allow us to find the equation of the straight line that point passes through A and B. Now, um, the easiest way to do this, since we don't have the y-intercept, is to go ahead and start with point slope form. Uh, so the first step is to figure out what your slope is and then put your equation into point slope form. You can use either point. So go ahead and pause your video and do that now. Okay, so once you plug in your two points to the slope formula, you should have ended up getting negative six divided by negative six, which is equal to positive one. So our slope is one. And then depending on which point you chose for the point slope formula, you would have ended up with either the blue or the green equation. But no matter what, when you converted it back to the form y equals mx plus c, like the question asked you to, you should have ended up with this final answer of y equals x minus three. Okay, so now based off of this, it says write down the gradient of the line that is perpendicular to the line passing through A and B. So gradient, again, is slope. Um, our original slope was negative six over negative six. 
If I were to change that to be the opposite reciprocal, I would flip the fraction and change the sign. So then I would have positive six divided by positive six, which is positive one. Um, 